A doctor called me, left a message yesterday morning about that pain, and said that he suffers from migraines, visual migraines, and he'd seen that pain reproduced in the paper. And uh, it was exactly like the, the uh, visual pattern that he gets uh, for 20 minutes before the migraine sets in. <laughs> and he wanted to know if I was similarly afflicted. And are you? No. 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 No, no. Uh, uh Actually, people have asked me before if it hurts for me to make my paintings. No, all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it hurts for you to make your paintings? No, but if no. I get asked the same question. You get asked the same question. All right, so I just want to ask you a little bit about the making of a painting here. I start uh, working on paper and draw out spirals. Mm -hmm. uh, I determine the shape of the canvas, and then I develop spirals that will play with the, the shape. Uh, and this painting here has two spirals that are yes. on, set on opposing diagonals and they cross over each other. And then uh, from the spirals I uh, uh, draw on, uh, directly on the canvas. That's, at that point I start working on the canvas. And um, So you're telling us you figure out your composition on paper first though? Just only the spiral part. Okay. All, everything else, all the, the angles, the triangles, the triangulation is all mapped out on the canvas mm -hmm. for the first time and in relation and it's and it's um, the triangulation is essentially draped over the spirals and it's complicated to describe that when you're seeing the finished painting but, sure but that's essentially it's a, a kind of a mapping that I, that I engage in mm -hmm. and then the triangulation gets further subdivided down into hexagons and then cubes so there's a cube here of yellow red and, and blue and a, another cube here is um, yellowish orange, yellow, and turquoise. And the whole canvas in all these paintings is a lattice of cubes laid over different kinds of, of, of spirals, mm -hmm. which I call coils. Which you call coils. But now the paint here, is it one coat, many coats? It's one coat. Okay, because it so, looks like it's like it's been, like there's a lot of paint on there, but it's just play, applied really thick. I just, uh, I don't dilute it. It's right out of the tube. Oh. or mixed the colors right uh -huh. out of the tube. Yes. And with this painting, I probably started right here because uh, I, I want to get through this crazy small detail part early on. Oh, okay. And so the hard and, part first. The hard part. Get, so, I, so I'm not not developing this sort of growing paranoia, you know, because my, when I start, first started painting in this way, I'd start in the upper left-hand corner, you know, with fairly large shapes. Yes. And then by the time I get here. You know, I'd be getting increasingly anxious that I was going to somehow screw up the color pattern. I see. So if I don't do it here and get through this, then it kind of get over the, 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 the trickiest parts. Right. Because I'm painting with zero, never zero brushes, or even with painting with the tip of an X-Acto knife to get the paint into these little shapes. Okay. And then, uh, but it's all full kind of impasto. It's almost like, like um, more like mosaic. It like, is more like, like patting the colors into these little um, four-sided shapes. These little diamonds are little, they're like little diamond-shaped uh, mosaic uh, tessera. Um, and, and there's no stenciling involved, right? There's no no involved. taping, no stenciling. No, no taping. No, I, I, I'm completing it as I go along. So the color, the thick color, I sort of push up the push the um, one wet color against the other. If you look closely, all the edges are a little wobbly, you know, because I'm really just pushing yeah, the wet it's color. It's the hand of the artist. Yeah. But you don't have any problem with like for instance having a, a blue right next to a yellow, this kind of a thing. They don't they don't bleed in and I clean my brush if there's any kind of infiltration that gets on from one color onto the brush from another color. Mm -hmm. I clean the brush, you know. Let's talk about yeah. like let's go over to this painting here. Okay. What got you in to the central, you've got it on a few paintings here, the central color changing. Uh -huh. uh, you've got it in another painting we can go to, the red right. and the green, so that there's this center thing going on. What, right. what brought you to that? Well, I worked with this spiral motif uh, for about four or five years, uh, and it's, a, it's called crossing oval coils. This is number 11. And in this, there's one spiral, it's hard for me to see how to start it, one spiral goes this way, yes. out, and then it passes outside the edge. And the other spiral goes, uh, hmm, I can't see, but the other one goes this way. Yeah. But the two spirals join in the middle. And what yes. I discovered with this was a kind of a cloverleaf pattern that occurred, mm -hmm. a kind of, uh, kind of lopsided cloverleaf. 
And so I guess I could show here one that's maybe easiest to see. If you look at, say, this deeper reddish color and this, this green, if you follow that along, that's the clo uh, clover leaf. Mm -hmm. And it's concentric. So the one in the center is the most rough, the smallest one. There's another one, another one, another one, and another one. And uh, so I thought it would be that it's a little, in a way, it's a kind of like, you know, trippy takeoff on Joseph Albert's homage to the square. Yes. It sets up that kind of possibility. Uh -huh. So with this, I started with this magenta, and this is a cadmium green. Nice. As the pure color. Love it. And then I added a little bit of, okay. um, of, um, of yellow orange to that. A little bit more yellow orange, a little bit more. A little so bit you're more. very mindful of your color theory and your history of color theory and well, all that as well. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask you, when did you start or why did you start going into painting this way? Like, what was, what compelled you? <laughs> I played with blocks until a fairly advanced age all as right. a child. So <laughs> all the kind of cubic stuff going on in this really come is a kind of like, you know, hangover of mm -hmm. having tinker toys, bricks, blocks, right. all those sorts of things. I like to build things. Yes. So the incremental geometry here is a kind of a, you know, it's a pictorial construction set. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, my first, all through under, uh, high school, undergraduate school, I was a representational painter. Right. Um, and it wasn't until I got to graduate school that I began to question, began to realize that all of my, I, pa I painted for 10 years from, you know, my early teens, that I picked up a lot of things from other artists. It was very difficult for me to see myself through all of the, the people that I had borrowed from. Mm -hmm. And so I thought the geometry was a more open terrain. But of course, these paintings, you know, I quickly realized that there's a whole 20th century worth of geometric painting. Right. I just didn't see, I wasn't as burdened by that, by that short Interesting. Of so, in, in graduate school, I studied for two semesters with Al Held, who's a, 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 just a, a mind-blowingly powerful geometric painter. Mm -hmm. uh, he's died a couple of years ago. Uh, and I can't say I had a close relationship with him, but I was really impressed by his paintings. Right. Uh, of, of, you know, enormous, enormous fields of geometric forms. And so, it was that kind of, you know, inspired by his work that I saw... Um, a way of, you know, thinking about space and geometric space on a huge scale that, that, and, and, uh, that set me going on this course. When I first moved into geometric work, having come out of a figural representational mode, a lot of the kinds of compositional decisions that I made were based upon my sense of my body in relationship to the paintings. So the kinds of, comp when I, my sense of balance, of balancing geometric forms, was body related. That's, that's, that comes out of figure tradition, but it's also, I think, was influenced by minimalism too. And the minimalist sculptural objects that have a kind of body relationship. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what I, I guess what I was gonna say though earlier mm -hmm. was that, um, I mean, I, I was, when I first saw Monet's uh, water lily paintings, the big murals of the water lilies, and I was really just blown away both by the sort of their spaciousness and their texture overall. I was also fascinated by the kinds of layered illusions that occur in them. And the painting we were first standing in front of were there all these simultaneous color lattices that some of which pull, pull forward, some drop back, and they, but they change, they switch roles at various times. That I think of those, that painting in relationship to some of Monet's water lilies, mm -hmm. where you're looking at both surface, you're looking beneath the surface, you're looking at reflection, uh, all those things simultaneously are occurring. And, well, and so that's, that's, that's of interest to me. Well, when you say that's also kind of played out in this pain that's behind you here. Mm -hmm. Here, um, well, I told you, when I saw it reproduced in the paper, you know, we talked about it before, it almost looked like the paper was off register. Uh, the, the illusion here is that it's, they're like, you know, tissue paper, cell, uh, cellophane, um, uh, that are red, yellow, and blue, that overlap. And where they don't overlap, you see the three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. Where they overlap, they mix. So all 12 colors are here, mm -hmm. but they, um, they're laid down in such a way 
that the, um, the tr there's this illusion of transparency, and you know, which from the distance it does the, the colors do look to be translucent and thin, and then when you get up close, you see that they're actually very physically painted, and and I like that that um, that play, that kind of um, uh, tension between physicality and transparency and, and that illusion. <laughs>